Hello, my name is Martin Ruck. I'm one of the product managers for Siemens, and today I'd like to take you through programming the Surex WP321 with the HMI Quick Start Wizard. So, a bit of background for you. In this project, I have a, an S7 1500 PLC with an ET200SP, and integrated into that, I have a WP321 weighing processor. Um, this has already been uh, configured basically bringing the WP321 as a technology module from the hardware catalog and inserting here into slot one so we've already done that the um, we've also downloaded the WP321 ready to use sample project it's free of charge from the Siemens industry support website and we've also integrated that into our project uh, and you can see there when we do when we bring that in that brings in the um, the function blocks and the pre-configured programming and configuration screens uh, which also gives us our display screens as well so all of those are already pre-configured for you to reduce the engineering time and free of charge when we've done that we end up with a screen that looks something like this hopefully you can see along the bottom here we've got some uh, pre-configured buttons so a zero calibration a tear cancel the tear preset tear and home in this case so you know if I have a um, for example, if I was putting a plate on my scale at home and I wanted to zero the plate out, I could tear it um, or cancel that. Or I could uh, have, if I always had a, um, a, let's say, a pallet of the same thing, I could have a preset tear for there. You can see there's an alarm banner along here, which gives me, you know, the scale is empty. It's at a standstill. It's in a teared condition. Uh, preset tear. A couple of limit alarms that we have on the device so we could set maybe a high alarm limit or a low alarm threshold on there uh, and an error condition. We then have these two buttons. One takes us into the programming and calibration mode and the other one takes us into the diagnostic mode. So if we uh, click on the programming button and I'll just flick us into the uh, the runtime here uh, on there you can see now we get the option for setup, diagnostics or language. So we're going to click on to setup. And you can see there's some more advanced options we can do here as well, but we're just going to be uh, interested really in getting a quick as possible setup here for this video. Uh, so here it's now taking me into the quick start, but before it lets me into there, it's warning me that I need to put the mode in, uh, unit into service mode. So if I click the service mode button, you should see the little icon go yellow. And if you looked at your WP321 weighing processor, you should see a flashing orange light on there to show you that that's in service mode. If we push on with the right button here, you can see I could also uh, go back to factory settings here. But in this case, I'm going to use the existing settings just in the interest of speeding things along as quickly as possible. So these are the basic parameters that we need to enter to get the, the scale up and working. Uh, the name of the scale, so I've called this one a Demo 321 at the moment. And if I'm clicking into the little white boxes here, uh, hopefully you'd see that uh, it pops up then with a, a little keyboard that I can enter. So, you know, I could enter grams or tons as an alternative. I'm happy with kilograms here, but um, maybe if you're unsure about the individual parameter of what you should be entering, if we press the help button on here, uh, you should see that there's a little help text pops up, which gives us, you know, a guideline as to what it's expecting in that individual parameter. So we're happy with that as kilograms, so we'll cancel that out, but I'll just take you through the other other values. So on here, this is really the, the indicator that's going to be on the main part of the scale. So normally, obviously, G would be gross in the UK, but uh, as a language item, maybe B is gross in German language. The resolution of the scale as a default, this would be 0.1. So in our case, that would be every 100 grams the scale would be incrementing. Uh, because we only got a light resolution one, I'm going to change that to 0.01, which will be every 10 grams increment on the scale. We have a minimum weight on here as well that the unit is applicable for. Uh, you'll notice these are linked here. So obviously, normally in a scale, you want to start at zero. But potentially, if you're doing weights and measures, there would be a minimum threshold for the application and a minimum resolution. So those are linked there just to point that out.
So in this case we're going to start at zero uh, and then the maximum weight, I have a 10 kilogram load cell here but potentially maybe you know if I had an application with a 100 kilogram scale and I had uh, 20 kilogram dead load on that scale I only have a usable capacity of 80 kilograms so I'd be entering in 80 kilograms for my scale here. So there we go, I'm going to leave that at eight, uh, 10 kilograms, save and move on to the next side. And you can see now we have two options for how to calibrate the scale. Um, we can calibrate with weights or we could do an automatic uh, electronic calibration here. So I'm going to take you through both of these but I'm going to start with the uh, automatic one. So we click on here now to do the automatic one it needs some details about the load cell and the support mechanism that we're using. Um, so on here we have first one it's asking us for is what is the frequency of the supply voltage in Europe that will be 50. Um, because I only have a demo demo scale here um, I only have uh, one load cell so one support point. Uh, now these other two values the characteristic values and the nominal load of a single load cell the way you find this information out if I just pop us back to the PowerPoint so that I can show you a picture um, if you had a look at the load cell that you're working on or you have on your scale you should see a maximum capacity of that cell which is 10 kilograms in this case and you'll also see this C this characteristic value of the cell which is uh, 1.9964 millivolts per volt sensitivity really in this case for the load cell. Uh, sometimes maybe if this is damaged and lost uh, you're not aware of that but or you know underneath a, a vessel sometimes you'll see it, it this will be stamped on the end of the load cell as well just as a reference information. Uh, if we just go back to our runtime then so we enter these values save and move on. Um, now if I take uh, my weight off my make sure my scale is empty and I now press the start automatic calibration that has now calibrated that scale. So if I go back to home you should see my, my uh, gross weight on there is zero. If I apply my 250 gram weight you should see that value come up to there. You can see the standstills come in into effect. I'll take it back off again and I go empty on there. So that's it calibrated in an automatic mode. If um, I want to use test weights I'll just take you straight back in and we do the same again existing settings we know these values now but this time we'll pick calibrate with weights so in here we have the option now to pick the, the zero value of the scale so normally obviously this would be zero as the starting point for my scale uh, and now it's asking me what is the weight of the calibration weight that I'm going to apply to my scale if I click on there and I enter 250 grams in this case or 0.2 kilograms and save that that writes it down to the weighing processor I go to the next value and you can see now it's getting ready for me to do the calibration so first of all I have to basically have my scale empty with no weight on it and I basically set press that button and what it does now is it takes this digital count value and applies it to zero so it sets my zero value proportional to that if, you, if I just touch on that you can see that value is moving around as I touch on the load cell but now if I now say okay on my scale I apply my test weight to the scale in this case my 250 grams and you can see that hasn't incremented 250 grams because it doesn't have a reference set point for the, the digital count value so if I now press calibration weight 1. It's taken the value that we entered previously at 250 grams, matched it to that and I now have my scale calibrated to those values. If I go home again you can see where it stands still with the weight on, take the weight off, goes to empty, apply my weight, 250 grams. So that's really a quick overview of how to calibrate uh, one of these scales using the HMI or the runtime uh, on here we will do some further uh, videos for you which is, has multiple load cells to help you through with those but that's really just to get you up and running as quickly as possible uh, if you need any help please contact us through uh, the Siemens support channels thank you for your time